right. This is uh, GUI and the new web browser's weekly call for 24th of July 2019. And uh, we meet again to talk about GUIs and web browsers. Um, Dietrich, do you want to go over agenda? To make sure. it more, more it interesting. Would, it would be my pleasure. Thank you for passing, passing the opportunity along my way. Let me share my screen. And apologies if you can hear the person working on their yard behind me. Uh, the first item on the agenda we have today is to follow up last week's discussion around ways to load web UI. It turns out there, there are so many ways. And each of them have their, their roses and their thorns. Yeah, so uh, Ali it was uh, not able to join us today, but I can uh, give a short summary of where we are. So basically, uh, the problem was uh, we were loading uh, web UI from the gateway port uh, to deliver the latest version to IPFS companion users. And the problem that came with loading from the gateway port was that the gateway port and API port have different origins, so you had to deal with uh, cross origin security and companion just uh, lifted lifted off uh, that uh, limitation uh, but that was like an additional code that we need to maintain and make sure uh, it works correctly so the plan uh, was to first uh, stop uh, shipping hard-coded uh, uh, CID of the latest web UI with companion and instead delegate it to uh, slash web UI uh, path at the API port on the JSIPFS or Go IPFS, and that way people uh, would just uh, use the version that was blessed by that specific release, and that would both solve the problem on the companion side, but also would solve uh, potential regressions between in the latest web UI when it does not work with older uh, Go IPFS or JSIPFS for some reason. Um, so that's the thing that uh, I sort of, I think I implemented the PR and that's ready to merge. Uh, and there's no technical blockers on that front. The problem is when we want to give people a, a way of testing the latest web UI. Uh, the idea was to uh, in whitelist uh, apart from the uh, CID, uh, specific CID on the API port. We wanted to also allow people to load the latest version using DNS link on webui.ipfs.io. Uh, but that one uh, sort of uh, introduced a potential security problem when we have a, when we have a, a person in a cafe and uh, that there's a, a malicious uh, DNS server uh, returning a different DNS link. Uh, Right now, Go IPFS and JSIPFS are using uh, DNS resolvers provided by the operating system. And there's no way to tell if that DNS query went over encrypted like DNS over TLS, DNS over HTTPS, or maybe plain text. And usually it's just DNS over plain text. So both uh, people can look uh, what you uh, querying, and as well they can provide a rogue uh, DNS server that introduces a different uh, response. And that way, make your Go IPFS uh, provide you with a different web UI. So uh, the plan for that is to uh, put breaks uh, on those PRs for loading a web UI from IPANS for using DNS link. And until we have a support for uh, DNS, like encrypted DNS. So the minimum thing we need is to ensure Go IPFS does not use uh, unencrypted DNS from operating system. And we need to switch to uh, something like DNS over TLS or DNS over HTTPS to ensure when we make a lookup for DNS link, uh, we get that from trusted uh, uh, recursive resolver, similar something similar like uh, H DNS over HTTPS feature in Firefox. Uh, I believe that's uh, more or less the story. Uh, on my end, I'll ship uh, 
that first patch, which falls back to the web UI provided by Go IPFS with the uh, next uh, IPFS companion uh, beta release, and the PR that enable pe enables people to opt into the IPNS is also ready to merge. Um, the way I made it is uh, it the text. It detects uh, that uh, the IPNS path is not supported and falls back to the old one. So we can ship that, but it won't work. So for now, I'll probably park it. Uh, wait for those changes in Go IPFS. Uh, I think that's all on this. Uh, if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer. Can you, can you explain what, what we get from these changes? And also the, even once you solve the DOH, like let's say you solve the unencrypted DNS problem uh, to ensure that it is encrypted, do we still have compatibility problems if there's other IPFS nodes running that aren't newer maybe and don't support this? Is there a uh, compatibility, backward compatibility fallback? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so uh, there, are, there are no problems when it comes to like, running companion against older version that does not support this. Uh, everything is uh, more or less uh, yeah, fully backwards compatible because it's, we will falling, we are switching back to the, the old way. So even the oldest uh, Go IPFS will work. Um, the problem uh, with, the problem with uh, DNS is that right now we just assume when we do DNS link lookup, we just assume it's, it's valid. But the truth is that most of people use unencrypted uh, DNS server provided by their ISPs. Uh, so it's not like there's a compatibility problem for the Go IPFS is just opaque. It does not know who, who, who resolved that. It just asks operating system for name, uh, for IP for that name or TXT record and gets it. Uh, so that's like more so, like- So this will actually be marginally safer Oh, that will be a lot safer because you will no, no longer leak uh, information about uh, DNS link websites you visit, you visit, and you will be sure that uh, the actual DNS link record was not tampered between you and uh, the DNS uh, resolver that you have configured in uh, GoIPFS. So the idea is there will be some like a trusted resolver hosted by us or just one of the big public ones, but uh, there will be an option for people to just pick their own. And my idea is to focus on DNS over HTTPS because we will need that and we actually have support for that. Uh, I believe Hugo already implemented that for IPNS uh, over DNS work. So we uh, already have a uh, working example of DNS resolver uh, in web browser uh, using DNS over HTTPS. Um, we just don't use that as a global default for entire IPFS node. So I believe that will benefit everyone if we just switch entire node using that. Fantastic. Thank you. Is there anything else that, is this primarily a change for local security and reducing surface attack surface for uh, man in the middle and, and tampering and tracking? Um, so like on the companion side, it's mostly about removing the maintenance burden. It's like we remove the code that was responsible for all the orchestration. Um, but for regular users, uh, totally it totally improves uh, security, um, especially if we add uh, like hardened uh, DNS uh, to both Go and JS, uh, that will totally uh, put a veil of uh, secrecy on what DNS link websites you are visiting, basically. I like that. All right, should we move on to the next agenda item? This next agenda item is content and peer discovery in browsers. It looks like there are some changes happening here. I believe I can pick this one as well. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, 
David created a proposal to sunset the STAR protocols. And uh, the STAR protocols are our old school way of, uh, those are uh, of uh, providing like a signaling and rendezvous uh, points for uh, nodes in web browser. Um, and we have a better ways, more federated ways, uh, uh, to do those things. Either those uh, better ways are already implemented or the spec exists, um, but still all our main docs and if uh, a person starts uh, working with JSIPFS in web browser context and they want to enable their node uh, to discover other peers, using the star protocols is actually the default we announce in our, our like code examples even in the readme of jsipfs i believe um, so that's sort of like an unfortunate thing that we still use those uh, sh short workarounds from years back and we don't uh, push those new better more federated decentralized solutions uh, through the finish line so that's like a proposal to sunset the uh, star protocols it's basically a uh, a way to of signaling to community that we will be moving uh, away from them it will take some time and uh, i believe we will need a new infrastructure for more decentralized federated infrastructure um, for those new solutions such like such as uh, like uh, rendezvous protocol and uh, the relay protocol um, so it's just to put it on the map um, and that's that will, uh, the star protocols are solving uh, content and pe like peer discovery right now. Uh, so that's why it's under this uh, topic. And the second uh, leg uh, uh, under this topic is how we can improve delegated routing in web browser. So delegated routing is one of solutions to replace star protocols. Uh, the way it works is you uh, delegate some queries such as like asking DHT for uh, peers that have this CID or maybe uh, publishing a record that you can provide this specific CID to people if they want to. So uh, delegated routing, uh, uh, we have like a modules for delegated routing uh, for content and peers and uh, the problem or challenge is that it needs to be, it will be mostly used in web browser and web browsers come with some challenges. Uh, the way delegated routing works is basically you specify a list of uh, web uh, service endpoints uh, that your JS IPFS node will hit when you delegate some uh, commands and uh, the way web browsers handle uh, request to remote origins is that you have a limit of I think I believe it's like six uh, uh, concurrent connections per host and also we have some commands such as uh, preload like recursive preload of a big uh, data set may take some time which means uh, that one request will hang for a long 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 time taking one of those six slots so uh, it's like ongoing challenge to uh, tweak uh, delegated routing uh, modules uh, to work better in web browser. One way is to throttle the number of uh, concurrent requests. I believe those PRs already landed. The next step is to uh, support like timeouts for those long running requests. Uh, because like in web browser context, we will, if we hit like more than five, uh, six uh, uh, preload uh, requests that take too much time, it, those requests will basically block everything else and nothing else will get delegated. Uh, so that those are uh, more or less challenges. And I, I mentioned delegated routing uh, in the context of sunsetting star protocols uh, as a like an illustration that it's like an ongoing effort. We need to land those new solutions make sure those uh, solutions work. There's a, like a default public infrastructure and instructions for other people to run their own uh, either delegated routing uh, nodes or like relays. And then at some time uh, we will uh, 
switch from star protocols. Um, I believe that's more or less the story behind that. If anyone is interested, there's more in there. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Do we have an understanding of kind of what the performance ceiling will be able to get out of this? Like if we, if uh, I think that the WebRTC base six connection cap was actually increased to 20 or something like that in some browsers. Uh, but do we have an understanding of how close these types of optimizations, like uh, adding timeouts and throttling concurrent requests will get us? Because it seems like the nature of those kind of reduces the amount of overall network throughput or activity that is available at a given time. So if, if, we, if we do everything that we think is possibly able to be done there, how much faster will content and peer discovery possibly be? Uh, are you asking about like specifically delegated routing through like some third party? Yeah, because I think that's a, the delegated routing is pretty much like the, that's the, the biggest opportunity that we have for in-browser nodes. Yeah, it's like for, for, for the short term, totally, that will be the fastest thing. Uh, it's like more sort of like a preload on steroids. Um, and that's just like regular HTTP requests. So it does not like use WebRTC or anything. It just delegates API to some our remote a HTTP API. So that's like a short term fix. Uh, so people can run their own delegated routers. Um, performance improvements. Uh, the, the main improvements. Will, the main improvement from this will be when you add content to your node in web browser. Uh, that content will get, uh, it will be provided to the network using delegated node, which means uh, all nodes that were not able to reach you before because you were running in web browser and you were not opening ports, uh, those nodes now will be able to reach and fetch that content because the way delegated content routing works, when you uh, execute like the provide method, it will ask the delegate node to fetch that data from you and then publish it to, and it will automatically publish it to the HD that it's uh, pro providing into the network. So if uh, someone else wants to get that data, they will reach for, uh, and get informed that dele de this delegated node has this content. Uh, so it's more about solving the problem of content being actually reachable than improving some metrics, if it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I get it. So they, they noticed they couldn't reach you because you were running in a browser before yep. they were able to get, that wanted that content. So that somehow they got access to that CID out of band. They asked for that CID. They can get it from the delegated nodes that you asked to hold that for you. Yep, yep. And uh, it seemed like a, almost seems like a, a vaguely pinning-ish Service. Yeah, it's like uh, asking other nodes to please make this content available. Yeah, it's like you ask that node to fetch the content from you because uh, you have a delegated node in your bootstrap node. So you're always connected to it. So that node is able to fetch the content from you. And then it's placed in the cache in the repo, uh, repo of that node. So until the garbage collection cycle hits, that data is provided from that node. Um, so that's like good solves the problem of when you are sharing stuff from when one web app to another web app uh, those nodes are uh, like the second person is still able to fetch data uh, even if the first one goes offline because the data is still existing on the delegated node so it's like an improved preload uh, yeah, and that's like it's short. Not, so it's, it's not even close to, to a pin it's more like a hot potato you're just holding it for a bit until yeah, so yeah. it's like when you share something and you close your laptop, you still want this person who you sent like a link or something to be able to reach the data. So that's like a short term uh, delegated routing. And for a longer term, that will be like a really protocol and, uh, and uh, rendezvous, which means people will be able to, uh, Hugo? Uh, question, so, you ask those nodes to give you some peers, and then how do you connect to those peers to get the data? Um, 
So that, that's, uh, that's when preload uh, kicks in. So you, you ask, uh, when you get those peers, you can ask uh, the, the delegate to also preload that content on itself. And then you are already connected to the delegate. So you can fetch data from the delegate. Uh, I believe there's like a small window uh, that we don't address yet using delegated modules. Uh, I think that that's uh, related to uh, fetching remote data uh, when I ask something from gateway. Uh, not sure how to how specific I, we want to go in there, uh, but there's like an issue on the repo of the uh, JSL P2P uh, delegated content routing module. Um, okay. So, so, so we are um, uh, effectively making the delegate nodes uh, relay nodes, and we always have active connections to those nodes. Yeah, so it's like uh, the delegated uh, routing is just uh, like like a sim simple uh, solutions for now until we have like a proper relays because uh, the way delegate uh, works is very naive. It just like prefetches specific block and we assume it that the block will be there for some time, either for someone else to fetch or for us to fetch from this node immediately. Uh, Something uh, that's more advanced is uh, a mixture of rendezvous and uh, relays when we get more distributed uh, protocol of peers uh, meeting uh, at some remote rendezvous point and then realizing they both can talk WebRTC, for example, and then they could upgrade the connection and talk directly. But until we have that, uh, th that, that's why we need delegated routing first. OK, so what's the problem right now of connecting directly uh, besides, uh, I know, not having WebSockets enabled? Uh, what's the problem of connecting directly through WebSockets to whatever peer has the blocks? If the if we if true like the de delegated uh, peer routing we get notified about this peer has the block you want and that peer has like WebSocket address, there's no problem. We can directly connect to it. The problem is that uh, WebSockets like web browser node is not able to open WebSockets. Like for listening, we can just like establish outgoing ones. So if there's like a Go IPFS node exposing WebSocket transport, we can connect to that. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. So you use the delegates to uh, ask, okay, give me peers that have the blocks uh, and inform me also if they have WebSockets. And then you get that information on the browser. Yep. And then you go through the list and connect to all of them, or at least the ones that have uh, WebSockets enabled. That, uh, that we can do right now, right? Oh yeah, totally. And I, uh, the problem is I've been looking at that uh, as a part of uh, the work I'm doing on Brave. And uh, the problem is that there's not, not that many peers listening on WebSockets because that requires uh, either requires uh, setting up certificate and using like uh, manually configuring uh, WebSocket transport in Go IPFS or someone uh, just enabled unencrypted uh, WebSocket, and that's a problem because if you are running JSIPFS on the HTTPS, you are not able yeah, to yeah, connect yeah. to unencrypted. Yeah, yeah. 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 sure. Yeah, so okay. that's like, if, if someone has a question, why Go IPFS is not listening on WebSockets by default, that's why, because by default it's not unencrypted, and most of websites are on HTTPS, which means they are not able to establish connection to unencrypted WebSockets. Sorry, one more question. So, uh, most of our network uh, is uh, behind nets, and we rely on uh, rely on relays to actually get the data from those peers, right? So, if we get uh, at least some relays to enable WebSockets, we might improve a little bit the situation. Is that true or? Thank you.
Yeah, totally. If we, uh, especially like if we have uh, at some point, uh, I believe the plan is for the bootstrap nodes to be also like relays and to also listen on WebSockets. Uh, and people could run their own. Uh, so that could be or should be like a linked package. So you both expose a web, uh, uh, web socket on the certificate to the network. You act as a auto relay. And if more and more people or institutions run those, that will totally improve the health of the network. And especially if you are running JSIPFS in a web browser, that, that node would be able to connect to more peers. But I don't think that's realistic to expect that will solve the problem. We, we will need still the auto relays. We will still need to have this rendezvous and protocol upgrades. But it's like a path, right? We want to move away from centralized uh, signaling servers to more like federated model for web browser. Thanks, that was super interesting. I know both more and less about delegated routing and relays now, that they are sometimes the same and different. I have one more question about this. What is, it seems like there's a staged approach towards landing some of these things. We're doing delegated routing first as a temporary workaround before we get full relay support. What is the time frame for relay support and what's blocking that? I believe that's uh, still being discussed on the issue I linked, uh, but more or less, uh, I believe uh, we won't actually sunset uh, web sockets until we have a public infrastructure of both uh, relays and rendezvous protocol like nodes supporting rendezvous protocols um, because we, we right now people are using a uh, web socket star for for the things that those things will provide but uh, we cannot expect people to run their own. Right now, people usually, when they start playing with IPFS or P2P, they use uh, signaling WebSocket star signaling from the README that we provide for the community to experiment and play with. So at least we should we to start uh, experimenting with this. We need to create a new infrastructure uh, using those replacements, run them in parallel. Uh, long story short, I believe that's like one, at least one or two quarters of work to get to the point when we run, uh, run them uh, confidently for some time, and then we can talk about like sun, like shutting down those nodes or just like sunsetting them. Here we go. Uh, so. Uh, uh, a while ago, uh, our info team and uh, I back on the number of relays that we have because we're using a lot of bandwidth for all of it. Um, would you see the same problem? The same problem happening? Was in because run was basically a signaling, they don't use that much bandwidth, but whatever relays that we use uh, will have the same problem. So I like to have a bunch of relay or are we still? I believe we lost Hugo. Yeah, it's, it sounds like the question is that when the infra team rolled back a bunch of number of relay servers last month because of some problems, how are we going to avoid hitting those same problems as we add new relays? Yeah, so uh, the, the problem we had with relays before was uh, those relays were used uh, for uh, like actually pushing the data. All the data had to went through those relays. 
and we started it as an experiment and there were no other relays on the network uh, and running them is expensive when it comes to bandwidth because like actual data goes through those relays um, the, the plan to mitigate that is to both run those relays but give a additional protocol for nodes to upgrade to peer-to-peer -peer connection so for example when i have two no jsipfs nodes running in a web browser by default though those both nodes are not able to talk to each other they will talk to each other through some relay however once those nodes are able to talk to each other they can realize hey we both can talk webrtc uh, so at that point those those nodes can uh, upgrade the relay connection to the peer-to-peer -peer one and that would save uh, the bandwidth for relays because those peers would just use relays for uh, like a rendezvous point um, there's a, uh, when we talk about this, there's a, like, often like a mixing of rendezvous and relay, because uh, sometimes uh, a, a single machine, single node can act as both. Uh, so the idea is to take off some bar uh, bandwidth burden for, of uh, relays by having this uh, protocol for upgrading connection to peer-to-peer -peer once those peers uh, discover each other's addresses. Not sure if that helps. I hope Hugo will watch this and get his answer. I got a quick question about the, the rendezvous. So um, are there plans to be able to make that happen through browser nodes as well? So for example, uh, um, you know, I'm connected to a peer that this other person's not connected to. We're communicating through WebRTC. Can I help them connect with this other person? Uh, as far as I remember being the like the rendezvous will be similar to the way um, being auto relay is okay. so you can mark yourself as a rendezvous point to others uh, but don't quote, quote me on that <laughs> i okay. need to catch up on reading uh, those specs uh, as well but i believe it will be an opt-in cool all right we have about 20 minutes left and two topics on the agenda left. So let's move on to IPNS in web browsers. I'm assuming Hugo added this item. No, I don't think. <laughs> I did because I, 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 again. I was just curious. <laughs> oh, you, want, what, you want me to talk about it? Yeah, like, what's up? <laughs> Okay, so uh, can I share my screen? It's right. It's all yours. Thank you. I have um, a tracking issue. Oh, uh, not seeing the tracking issue. All right, okay. My clothes, in a bit um, about the whole IPNS over DNS um, endeavor, which uh, in the last quarter we kind of did an experimental um, implementation of it, and right now in this quarter the objective is to make it like production ready and deploy it to everyone globally. Uh, but it needs to be in a way that it holds up, like we don't lose records, the database uh, established and stable, um, everything like to correctly deploy the name servers and all that stuff. Uh, and that's the, the work that needs to be to happen uh, this quarter. Plus a couple of, uh, at least on the JS side, a couple of tweaks and uh, that the code still needs, like uh, the one we were, we were talking about, uh, supporting uh, DNS over HTTPS and stuff like that. 
Um, and one other thing, which is adding support for this on the Go side, uh, is also uh, in the objectives for this quarter. Uh, Dominic is already has already a, a preliminary implementation of the um, the router, the IPNS router over the NS. But it's still in the early stages, and we need to to make it uh, land in uh, in the IPFS. And right now, um, me and Nadine are, are talking about extracting IPNS uh, uh, completely out of uh, IPFS in Go and JS. Uh, some guys from the cluster team uh, need this to be able to kind of in some of the service don't actually load the complete Go IPFS. Uh, so these are the tasks that are going to happen this quarter. And we like we will only have this ready right at the end of the quarter because there's still some some tasks to do, some way to go. Probably JS will have it uh, soon, but Go, IP, uh, Go IPFS will take a little bit longer. Hopefully, we'll manage to have this um, uh, done by the end of the quarter in Go, but uh, at least uh, JS, I'm hopeful that uh, it's soon, we will soon have the, 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 the DNS router uh, available to any, uh, everyone. Any questions about this? I got a quick question about extracting uh, IPNS related logic from the main IPFS. Okay. Uh, sure. I know that uh, the, gate, the code responsible for gateway is planned to be extracted from uh, Go IPFS as well. Uh, so is there like a discussion of making it like a so, sort of uh, following a single convention of where to like cut out the stuff and how to uh, shape up those new APIs? Uh, no. no, not yet. All right. No. Uh... The way we are thinking about it is the, is the same way that we kind of have uh, the repo extracted from the, uh, the JS IPFS. IPFS will be just the same. Mm -hmm. It can work standalone, but uh, inside JS IPFS is just a, a require way. It just requires, and it, the API will be the same. We have a publish and we have a resolve, and it's basically that. Mm -hmm. uh, are you like extracting just IPNS or is there a, like a plan to extract stuff that's handling things like DNS link and other naming things in uh, Go IPFS? Uh, the, yeah, that's, that's another, that, that, that's uh, where we are kind of stuck. Okay. Uh, figuring out what's naming, what's IPNS, what's not. Uh, kind of reaching a conclusion about it uh, to see what gets extracted and what uh, keeps what uh, what else we keep uh, inside uh, either Go or JS mm -hmm. Yeah, I ask because like I remember uh, briefly some discussions during IPFS camp uh, that some people wanted to like use uh, DNS link or IPNS without actually using IPFS. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's that, 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 that's why we want to extract. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. Anyone else has questions about IPNS? I have a question. I I am curious. Once this set of changes lands, what does that landscape look like for people using this? Is this primarily a performance benefit? What do we get besides, I know from the previous discussion, we get uh, a lot of local network um, uh, privacy from moving to this. And it sounds like we also get a lower, also some lower maintenance burden because the communication and resolution will be using maybe a more unified approach. But what else do we get out of these changes? Uh, I think you basically summed up everything pretty well. Uh, 
we we get in one single router uh, support for uh, like global use over the internet and local. Uh, we get uh, privacy with uh, DNS over HTTPS. We don't use any of uh, the current like DHT network to do anything with this router. So it's kind of not as much as a centralized scan as the uh, DHT, but it's like streamlined. Everything is already known by everyone because DNS is an old tech. Um, and yeah, it's, it's super fast. Um, and yeah, the user will, all, will, ha will have available uh, different routers. And the thing is, you get either the fast response or the, the, the decentralized response. You need to choose between the And also with DNS, you get some which are uh, some domains already made for you. Uh, okay, am I back? Can you hear me? My connection is yeah. It was it was a little it was a little choppy, but I think we got it. Okay. Okay. So we get um, base um, thirty-two uh, subdomain for everything you publish, and you you also get some like uh, human evolve humanly um, subdomains that you can set. Up. Uh, nope. The hard stop. I don't know. Again. Am I back? You are. Oh, all right. Did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah I have a follow-up question to that question, which is, uh, you said there's a... a uh, users now are making a choice between the fast option, the fast centralized option, or the decentralized option. Uh, do we have plans to make that a little bit more dynamic? So instead of a binary either or choice, it will be dynamically fallback. So if you choose the fast centralized option and that fails due to state, state actors maybe blocking certain DNS, then it would fall back to the slower decentralized option. Yeah, we we have a a, a a plan to how to how to handle that. Um, right now, uh, I don't think we will implement it completely. We will define a single strategy to publish and resolve. Uh, but the plan is to add more options and uh, uh, like a callback thing that you get. Um, that the user, the user gets to receive the other responses that come from different routers. So basically you can choose to always get the, the fast one, but you, you have a, like a hook to the other ones. And then you can decide what you want to do. Either you use the first one or you wait for the others, whatever you, you want to do. Thank you. Are there any other questions before we go? We've got a minutes left and one more agenda item. Who added the item about the peers view? Justin. That's me. This is going to be really fast, so no worries. We're almost done. Um, so th this is an issue that Ollie created yesterday, I believe. I just had a quick question about Let's ignore the first item because that's kind of irrelevant. How would you guys sort locations? What, what seems most logical there? By that's locations, do, do you yeah. mean uh, is that IP addresses so, or do you actually have the textual description? So we've you... actually got the text description. Well, it's a mix, right? You have a lot of unknowns here. And then you have somewhere, it, it's a city in, in a country. So they were wanting to sort by fix location sorting, but I'm curious about like what you guys think logically works for sorting location names. Would it be sorting by the country 
and then so country and then city so you'd see the cities alphabetically but in order of countries or yeah i'm trying to figure out what makes the most sense there if so if you were doing it by basically place names then i do think country and then city would make sense it would make more sense if we listed it as United States, Fairfield, than if we listed it as Fairfield, United States, but that does make sense okay. to me. The other thing we talked about on an earlier call is that it would be more interesting for us to see the highest latency, like, which might be- Yeah, yeah, that's if actually- If I understand reason. correctly, so that's the order. If we weren't trying to do it by names, I'd say by latency okay. would be particularly useful, smallest type of thing, yes. Uh, something about uh, location is that we have a special type of location which is unknown mm -hmm. uh, and I believe like those unknowns should be at the very end yeah I agree so like you we sort like countries and uh, cities like lexicographically however like an un unknown should land at the very end the otherwise very we, we get like very not non interesting uh, list at the very top yeah well and it's it looks like it resolves these over time so a lot of things will be in unknown and in initially but over time they change to actually their their actual location as they figure out where that the ip is based um okay well that's good to know i'll go ahead and pick that direction on the on the chats eric had a comment oh. about distance from me yeah. yeah so you do your 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 browser-based gps lookup and, uh -huh. and sort by geographical distance, which may totally not align with latency distance. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that aligns, though. That could be it would cool. Would be cool to sort like that. Yeah, I like that approach, but would it be confusing because you? It wouldn't look like there's order there, right? That's not. That's not the default. I feel fun. like, yeah, that's a novelty. That's a novelty sorting. Okay. Um, these other columns are sortable as well which gets a little bit weird because it doesn't, I don't know that all of the other columns make sense to sort by. Um, any, any ideas or opinions on these other sort options or what you would expect to see here? Okay, well, that's, that's good, that's fine. I guess if nobody cares, then <laughs> we'll address it when it becomes an issue. Perfect. It seems that like la latency is, Latency yeah, is most likely. Yeah, I, I think that's probably the most important one. Valuable one. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, guys. If, thank you. Eric, if, so, if some uh, if some of the headers are clickable and others aren't, we might want to visually differentiate them. Perhaps you know, underlining the ones that are maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I can look into that. Um, the the sorting is built into the table component that we're using here. I'll see if they have options about how to display what's selectable and what's not. Can I just say that I'm digging how uh, engaged Enrique is? Enrique is, I want you to be that interested when I present something. That's my hope, <laughs> that I can aspire to that, earn that level. Uh, th thanks for self-advocating. Before you speak, you could request that level of interest. Uh, goodbye, Terry. Nice to see you. Is there anything else on the agenda today that people would like to talk about? Since we're all here, we got six more minutes. Would you like to sing one of the folk songs of your people? Eric, I know Chicago's got something cool. Chicago folk songs. <laughs> They're all about gangsters and pizza. <laughs> Just trying to satisfy the cliches that are in all of your heads <laughs> right now. <laughs> all right, resident gangster in the house. Some right. of them are true, sad. Oh, yeah, there's some history there. In that case, uh, no singing today, but maybe next time Eric will bring us a song. I did drive by Al Capone's grave yesterday. I'm a living, driving, cliche Chicagoan, <laughs> but it was only because it, it's right on the way to where I had to go. And it's, it's very, I would not plan a trip explicitly for that, by the way. It's, it's pretty disappointing. 
All right. Thanks, everybody. See you next week. <laughs>